This video is a review of the Principles of Quantum Mechanics chapter in the Quantum Chemistry and Spectroscopy playlist. So we start with the five postulates of quantum mechanics, things that we can't prove but are first assumed to be true and then later proved by the validity of their predictions. First, that the wave function is what specifies the entire state of the system, psi of xt, and it, every property that you can know about a particle is contained inside the wave function. And psi star times psi is proportional to the probability that we will find our particle at any given point in space. We have postulate two, that classical mechanical observables, or physical properties you can measure, are related to linear Hermitian quantum mechanical operators. So operators represent things that you can measure, like position, momentum, uh, etc. Three, the only values that we can measure for an operator of a given observable are eigenvalues of that operator, where the wave function is an eigenfunction of that operator. So the only possible values we can measure are the set of the eigenvalues of that particular operator. Fourth, the average value, so over a large number of measurements, the average value we'll get is given by the expectation value integral, the integral of psi star operator psi, divided by the integral of psi star psi, the normalization integral. And finally, postulate five, the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, h psi equals i h bar d psi dt, where our time-dependent wave function is a function of both space and time, which can be uh, used through separation of variables to develop the time-independent Schrodinger equation, h psi equals e psi. Moving on from there, we have commutators, which is the difference between acting first with A and then with B, and first with B and then with A. If two operators have a commutator which is zero, they are said to commute. If they do not commute, then you cannot simultaneously measure both of those properties to arbitrary accuracy. So for example, the commutator of momentum and position in the x direction is equal to minus i h bar. So those two, uh, those two properties cannot be measured to arbitrary precision due to that commutator. All right, um, also physical observables need to be real numbers. Things like energy, position, and momentum are all real numbers, so we need to ensure that all the eigenvalues of our operators are going to be real numbers as well. We do that by making sure that our operators are Hermitian, which obey the following mathematical statement, which will then require that their eigenvalues have to be real. We can represent a lot of these integrals and uh, notations in shorthand using what's called Dirac notation, where we have a ket vector for a wave function, a bra vector for the complex conjugate of a wave function, a braquette for the overlap of two different wave functions, and an expectation value integral represented by this type of shorthand expression. If the overlap of two basis functions, their integral over all space of their product is equal to zero, then they are said to be orthogonal to one another. For Hermitian operators, if you have a different eigenvalue, then they are required to be orthogonal to one another. If they are one when you have m equals n and zero otherwise, then they are both normalized and orthogonal, which is called orthonormal. In general, our wave function can be what's called a superposition of states, where it's a linear combination of the eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian with some coefficient uh, on each eigenfunction. Uh, these are going to be orthogonal to one another because the Hamiltonian operator is Hermitian. And the average energy that we would expect in such a system is a sum over all the states of their coefficient squared, or the magnitude of their coefficient squared times En, or a weighted average where the coefficient squared is the probability that we're going to measure the value from that individual state. All right, if two operators commute, then they are going to have the same eigenfunctions. They'll have the same uh, basis set from which we can expand, and we can use that to show that when operators commute, we can measure them both uh, simultaneously to arbitrarily high accuracy. We account for the time dependence of wave functions by separation of variables of the time dependent Schrodinger equation, where we get that the time dependent wave function psi n x of t is equal to psi n x, the time independent wave function 
times a complex exponential e to the minus e i e n t over h bar, where e n is the energy of that individual eigenstate. And then the general time dependent wave function is a sum of the coefficients of each of these eigenfunctions. Then finally, we have wave function collapse, where if we have some wave function, which is a general superposition, and we measure the energy, or any property really, of the wave function, we have the probability of measuring each value depending on the coefficients of whatever value we measure. But then the wave function collapses once we measure it. So it goes from being a superposition to being in a single eigenfunction. So if we measure again, we'll get a 100% chance of measuring the same energy that we did in the previous case. So links to all of these individual videos on the on-screen annotations and in the description as well.